Blessed morning Friday, everyone, and welcome to our webinar, Leveraging Free Microsoft Technology Resources for Remote Learning. I'm your host, Gadi Gabdula, a faculty of the College of Education and a training coordinator on learning objects under the Office of the Center for Innovative Learning Program. Welcome once again. Um, we say that learning never stops. As schools around the world respond to COVID-19, the need for remote learning tools has never been more urgent. But to make distance learning easier, we need to create resources, training like this and how to do guides that we hope will help schools, educators, students, their families as they navigate their new normal. Hopefully, with four speakers today, the Microsoft experts of the LSUD, the use of free Microsoft technology for remote learning will be of great help to continue attaining academic excellence in the new situation. This webinar is hosted by the Commission on Higher Education, and so we would like to thank Dr. Judith Mary Anchan, Education Supervisor 2, in partnership with De La Salle University Das Marinas. So we'd like to thank Dr. Marcos Saez, our Vice Chancellor for Academic and Research. Before we begin our webinar, let's have our prayer, the Gospel prayer and the singing of the National Anthem to be led by Dr. Robert San Sebastian. Let us pause for a while and feel the presence of God. Remembering that we are always in the loving, in holy presence of God. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Gospel reading today, October 23, 2020 second from the book of Luke, chapter 12, verses 52 to 59. Interpreting the time, he also said to the crowds, When you see a cloud rising in the west, you immediately say, It is going to rain, and so it happens. And when you see the south wind blowing, you say, there will be scorching heat, and it happens. You hypocrites, you know how to interpret the appearance of earth and sky. But why do you not know how to interpret the present time? Settling with your opponent. And why do you not judge for yourselves what is right? Thus, when you go with your accuser before a magistrate, on the way, make an effort to settle the case. Or you may be dragged before the judge, and the judge hand you over to the officer, and the officer throw you in prison. I tell you, you will never get out until you have paid the very last penny. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise the Lord, Lord. Jesus, Jesus Christ. For our opening prayer, may your goodness and love be present among us today. Come bless our webinar with openness of our hearts and minds. We can ask to your presence. We can ask to your indwelling. We can ask to inward side of you, in speech with you, in strength from you. May our spirit live up to you all day, 
in all ways. St. John Baptist Pilasan, may Nicholas. all your brothers who have come before us intercede with God for us, that we might realize more fully His abiding presence within and among us. Leave Jesus in our hearts forever. forever. The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Dr. Ruben San Sebastian. Once again, we would like to welcome you to this webinar. Um, let me welcome the following, the faculty members who are here, of course, the administrators of the participating schools and guests. Uh, as of the moment, we are 200 participants in this uh, MSDs. And so let me share with you the objectives of the webinar. At the end of this webinar, everyone should have been, should have been led towards the understanding, the valuing, and the appreciating of the appreciation of the Microsoft, te Microsoft technology. The first objective is to present the free Microsoft tools used for synchronous and asynchronous learning, to equip the faculty on the use of the identified technology tools, and to present ways for faculty to access free online resources and professional development. Some friendly reminders for the attendees. The webinar is recorded. Make sure that your name is seen upon joining this webinar. If your name is anonymous, please exit and rejoin this webinar again and input your name. This will be the basis for your certificate. Use Q&A chat to ask questions. Please do not forget to indicate your school and your institution. This will be read after the four speakers. You can email the speakers if you have questions about their topic. You may send them at cilp at the lsud.edu.ph. How to get your certificate? Participants who are able to join the webinar are entitled to get a certificate. The link for the evaluation of this webinar is found in the succeeding slide. The evaluation link is also posted in your chat box. After we have confirmed your attendance and after you answer the survey, you will receive your e-certificate within one week through your registered email. The name that will appear in your webinar certificate will be based on the name you used in joining this webinar or your answer in the survey. So, Welcome again to leveraging free Microsoft technology resources for remote learning. We are very fortunate to have with us and to formally uh, welcome us in this webinar. Let us welcome the Vice Chancellor for Academic and Research of De La Salle University Das Marinas, Dr. Marco Saez. Thank you, Gadi. Good morning to all of you. I'd like to recognize, aside from Dr. Judith Chan, I'd also like to recognize the chair of the committee tasked by Chen to provide the free seminar, the president of the Committee State University, Dr. Hernando Robles. Uh, he is also joining us as one of the attendees for this seminar. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir, for joining us. I guess what brings us together as members of higher education institutions all over Cavite 
is the goal of bringing quality education to our citizens, especially our citizens. Maybe it has just became it has just become more exciting lately because of the pandemic. The journey towards that may be seen as a little bit challenging nowadays because of some limitations that we have to overcome. But you know what, contrary to what people think that logistics, money, and funding are those that separate schools from one another in terms of where they are uh, in reaching the goal of quality education, it's really the mindset and it's really the heart that should in a way prevail and overcome all these limitations. Hopefully, our resourcefulness, our inventiveness, and our strong desire to get in touch and provide good education will prevail over these limitations. Today's seminar hopes to help everyone become or bring, be closer to that goal of quality education. We are going to provide seminars on how we can tap on free resources to make sure that the interaction and the engagement that we're having with our students are worth their while. Ultimately, uh, we hope that this seminar would serve as a spark towards more partnerships and more learning engagements that we can involve ourselves as partners. So thank you very much, and I hope you'll have a great day ahead. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sir Marco, for the inspiration. Uh, we would like to acknowledge the presence of the following, the schools represented so far. Laguna State Polytechnic University, E. Labukay Primary School, we have here Cavite State University, Adventist University of the Philippines, E. Labuyan CS, Villa Ban North, Leyte Division, wow, Eya Cavite, Emilio Aguinaldo College, DLSUD Das Marinas High School, University of Perpetual Health Molino, Inupakan District Kalayan Educational Foundation Incorporated, FCD Central Institute, the Alasal Medical and Health Sciences Institute, Power School of Technology, Tanza, National College of Science and Technology, the LSUD, International Peace Leadership College, and uh, Cavite West Point College. So thank you for joining us. Let me now introduce our first speaker for the first session. The speaker will introduce and discuss features of Microsoft Teams to teachers in facilitating their online synchronous classes. She is a training coordinator for multimedia development, CILPD and SUD. She is also a Microsoft Innovative Educator Expert and a faculty of the College of Engineering and Architecture Technology. Ladies and gentlemen, let us welcome Ms. Claudine San Jose. Thank you, Sir Gadi, for the introduction. Uh, good morning, everyone. Thank you for giving time to attend this webinar. Uh, as the first speaker, I will talk and share to you uh, one of the most uh, used application at Microsoft, which can also be used uh, for leveraging Microsoft technology tools for remote learning. Uh, my topic is all about uh, learning, uh, integrating learning, teaching and learning pedagogy using Microsoft Teams essential features. So, by the way, my name is Claudine San Jose. I'm a faculty of De La Salle University Das Marinas, and I'm also a member of uh, CILP, uh, Center for Innovative Learning Programs, and I'm a certified uh, Microsoft uh, educator. Um, the learnings I want to share with you for today are the following. Uh, to have a reliable virtual learning platform that is free to use, which can be also aid your online remote distance learning needs. Next is to adopt our teaching pedagogy and practices using the current modality and set up uh, the present setup that we have. The next is to facilitate, um, facilitate synchronous sessions and asynchronous sessions utilizing Microsoft Team applications. When this pandemic comes to one uh, of the, uh, no one ever predicted that this moment will ever happen. The situation limits us freedom to do the things that we have enjoyed before uh, such situation as face-to-face -face teaching and learning interactions with our students and colleagues uh, have become limited. 
Our pedagogy as teachers help us to revisit and evaluate things to find our center, to plan for things and, and modality setups in delivering learning contents and engaging our students. Uh, this help us to find unconventional and teaching tools for evaluations, which also challenge ourselves to be resilient as a result of behavioral change. Even with the current challenges that we have a role in the mentoring the minds of our students, uh, this hasn't been taken for granted. A better efficient and effective learning strategies are far more expected with us using the current modality and septa that we are adopting. Uh, learning evaluation, productivity and development were tested to expound a better with the tools and application to integrate with assessment activities uh, which also expected to become more engaging to train the 21st century students and also to put application of whatever is learned. Um, these includes practices, modalities, strategies, and styles that help us adapt more better, not only with the pandemic, but also to the current technological change that we have that will help us to become more innovative. Uh, by trying to explore new ideas as teaching aids and tools that can adopt and transform our mindset to a better future. The conventional learning management and facilitation makes a uh, traditional classroom setup shifted to a larger space, which uh, is the virtual environment. Conventional rooms to endless creations of virtual spaces, such as teams and groups using Microsoft Teams channels were featured and created. Face-to-face -face and teaching learning assessment were changed to online meeting that can transpire to anywhere, anytime, and any device features of the platform. Uh, this, such, this platform conducts uh, synchronous and asynchronous meeting sessions with our students through audio, video, and conference, even chat and email. To give you an overview how Microsoft Teams work, these online tools serve as meeting hub to bring together certain groups that requires online presence, uh, collaborations, and con uh, connectivity through chat, uh, threaded conversations, um, even meetings, and um, Credit conversations equipped with Microsoft 365 resources that enables us to power and, and um, li defy limitations in terms of creativity to explore and optimize uh, learning applications. Data shows that compared with other applications, Microsoft Teams now becomes a competitive platform to use. So in order to make advantage of the feature, uh, make use to make sure to uh, sign up for a basic plan, for at least a basic plan. Let's sign up for an account and start using our school and official work domain address as credential to validate our information. So given that we are educator, uh, make sure to uh, sign up using a teacher account. Before you start, you always remember that Microsoft Teams always revolves with two basic navigation bars to work on applications. Uh, this includes the left bar as a power tool, powerful tool that summarizes the important resources and features within your Microsoft Teams. This includes activity feeds uh, that display uh, your colleagues and your activities, including your students, uh, across the Teams channel chats and apps that have access to. Chat also the summary of messages uh, from your colleagues and students. And Teams uh, presents uh, your created group and your created and managed class. The calendar picture display the schedule activities and tasks of your teams, including teams that class your managed. Clo calls show contacts and calls histories and voicemail associated with your accounts. You can also make voice call and assign speed dial with your contacts. The last, the last feature displays uploaded and downloaded files with your MS Teams, including the documents that is shared by your other members of the group and also other connected cloud drive storage with your account. First and the most important feature of Microsoft Teams is to establish virtual environment and the space for each group that varies of these classifications and the needs are the teams. The team tab will let you show the existing groups you created. 
or this if this is your first time it will ab it will enable you to create or join a team within your, within your network of organizations creating a team only requires your initiative to attempt to make one um, teams may vary according to the type of group you would like to make it ranges from plc groups to work from staffs and organizations, and of course, our teams intended for our class that we will manage over time. Just fill in the required information for your group and for your team name for the other descriptions. You can add students by typing and searching their names in the directory, and uh, you can do the same process with your colleagues and teachers that you can add and become co-owner of your group. Similar to um, others, uh, it will give you a prompt, prompt that you will be that you are successful in creating your teams. Uh, if the team section is now generated with a new section. Once the information is complete, the team uh, section will be generated uh, in the created team. Uh, this top menu bar will also generate it that age specifically our group's requirements according to your preference and customizations. Microsoft Teams have this channel feature that will help you organize the activities, tasks, features within your teams. For classes, meeting channels is best to be a room for synchronous and asynchronous class for your meetings and meeting sessions and your consultations. Just click the ellipse icon to show the hidden tabs and settings and choose add channel to fill up information details to requirement as your uh, group information. For my teams, I labeled my channels as my synchronous and asynchronous class meeting with my students. A basic Microsoft account can create up to 200 channels, including those who are deleted. Uh, these are the list of channels that I have created uh, that shows and display in this section. For teams, I labeled my channel uh, uh, for online calendar meeting as, uh, invitations for synchronous and asynchronous class sessions and consultations. An online presence and engagement will not put into uh, practice without OJA and OJA meeting collaborations. To schedule a meeting, uh, just go to calendar section in your left bar and check your uh, desired schedule, schedule for class uh, for conference to your ability. Just fill in the necessary requirements and details for your meeting and don't forget to include the channel of uh, your previously created um, Teams channel. To finish, don't forget to add notes and messages to make your meeting invitations be more personalized. Once completed, the send button at the top right portion of this page to send the invitation uh, to send the invitations to your colleagues and students. Next is to gear up with your teams by creating online presence and engagement with the use of synchronous and asynchronous sessions. Also video conferences and chat and content sharing, which is the Microsoft uh, Teams essential, will be featured. Please take note that the features here are available uh, for the basic and free account. If you have done calendar invitations, a notification will prompt you to join your meeting. But if you want to run meeting sessions ahead of time, you can do so by doing team, uh, by going to team tab sections and select the desired team that you would like to connect to. At the top of top of portion of the page, you will see the meet now icon and just press it and ready to. Once executed, a window will pop up in your screen prior uh, to the starting of the meeting. You might want to check your device settings and uh, just click OK if you are ready to, to start the session. To further customize your meeting session for your device, kindly access the device setting setups. Uh, make sure that these devices are working. So device settings, uh, this, these settings will limit, uh, will, will uh, features on how to reach our students using our display and uh, 
audio, audio devices. So make sure to check your audio devices from speakers to microphones and even your cameras. You might also want to check the re and review the meeting options to set up your sessions. So these uh, meeting options will limit the people of who can access your account uh, that can be accessed by people in your organizations. And for those participants who can present uh, during your uh, meeting online conference. Uh, you may want to save the settings for you to, to check and save the, the preferences that you have uh, made. Customization features. Uh, since my talk is only focused to what is basic and essential, I will let you explore by yourself the settings under your own account customizations. Once the scheduled are met, meeting notifications will prompt you and your invited participants to join the meeting. The individuals who are present will shown in the participant photo. One, one of the best productivity features of Microsoft Teams is that it will enable the organizer to download the attendance uh, by clicking the attendance leaps and ellipse icons and the separate window will pop up that will help enable this organizer to download the list of participants. The attendance list will give you the summarized reports and the time steps of your meeting attendance from the time that the participant joined the event until they left the conversations. Chat and raise hand feature will also be adopted from the traditional conventional mode of our teaching practices. It helps us and our students to engage with one another. Uh, an orange notification bubble will appear to give your notifications as action for particular task. Here, the chat displays and shows eight notification alert. That means eight conversations were posted in chat thread. Under the hand picture, two notification bubbles were displayed that shows that there are two participants were raising their hands. A teaching and learning practice will not be complete without the chance to deliver content presentations and contents to your audience, most especially with your students. A share content icon will enable you to share your presentations with your students, and these include system sounds from your devices, uh, desktop windows, PowerPoint, and even browser displays. For this slide, I opted to share my PowerPoint presentation with the audience with all the animation and effects that, presentation, that this presentation requires. Another option is to explore um, the whiteboard options so that you as a teacher will have the opportunity to write all your notes candidly with the, with the other participants. So MS Teams feature will let your uh, other participants collaborate with you, such as this one. The white wall enables you to present and write your candid ideas with your audience to engage in collaborations. For notifications and announcement, the group under the team tab will give you file sharing and assessments. And these are tools to equip students for better learning. Uh, these tools are used to measure the learning productivity that they have gained un under your class. Post tab lets you engage with your students by sending notifications and, and announcement with your groups. So this uh, pedagogies helps you to connect with your students uh, using uh, learning and online presence. Files will help you share different Microsoft file types and application from different folders and drives. It enables you to share a link outside from the platform and to add cloud extension storage from your Teams account and download uh, documents, download documents and uh, extensions of other drives. The learning outcomes assessment lets you share contents that varies from the others. Assignments are the summary of your of your assessments and evaluations. Uh, these will enable you to customize also with particular students. 
Grades are one of the best features of MS Teams that will track the learning and development and productivity of your audience. In our school, we use uh, separate learning management systems. So to be honest, I haven't explored, explored this much yet, but it's good to know that these features are free using basic free account uh, Microsoft Teams. A productivity tool can be also be integrated to summarize the analytics of your class. However, these tools are third-party apps that maybe uh, will will let you decide whether to purchase one to pro to produce uh, and track the activities and the development of your students. Other application tools for activity to explore. There are a lot of uh, tools and productivity tools that you can uh, navigate and integrate with your MS Teams. Uh, there are there are uh, apps icons located at uh, the bottom right below, uh, bottom left below, uh, and it will help you to access all the apps that is uh, already uh, available and can be integrated in your Microsoft Teams. For now, given that I have uh, discussed uh, applications that can be integrated with your synchronous and asynchronous sessions, I turn you over to my colleagues from them to introduce you with uh, other pre-productivity learning apps that can be integrated to your Microsoft Teams platforms. Uh, thank you very much. My name is Claudine Sanose. And again, it's my pleasure to share this learning productivity tools with you. Maraming salamat po. Thank you, Professor Claudine, for your uh, great discussion. Thank you for sharing with us the different features of MS Teams to provide and deliver learning content to students. If you have questions, um, again, use Q&A to ask questions. But don't forget to indicate your school and institution. Thank you once again, Mom Claude. For the next speaker, he is the master of all masters. He will share his experience in using Microsoft to empower students to achieve more. Two platforms will be discussed here, the flip grid and the weight net. He is the Training and Support Supervisor of the Center for Innovative Learning Programs, a Microsoft Innovative Education Expert, and a Microsoft Education Ambassador of the Philippines. Wow. He is also the, a, 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 the, a professor, uh, a faculty of the Social Sciences Department. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Professor Roland Lorenzo Rubin. Hello, good morning. Yeah, and how are you all? Kumusta everyone? And so I hope you're all doing fine. Thank you, Sir Gadi, for the introduction. Hindi naman siguro master of masters. No lang. Simple guro. <laughs> and let me share my slide with you. And uh, this morning, I'll be sharing with you the synchronous, asynchronous tools that you can use for your classes. Okay, if, if there will be questions later on uh, about my presentation, you can reach me here at rmruben at dlsud.edu.ph. I'd like to share with you some photos that shows our new reality now that coronavirus has sent the world online. Okay, here's the first one. Since March, when uh, the GCQ was declared, everyone was working from home and still is. We're still working from home. So ito yung new normal na natin. So instead of going to our offices, some of us, we stay at home and when we continue working from home. In governments, still working. 
So even uh, in uh, in sessions, uh, for example, in our Congress here in the Philippines, our our officials attend sessions in their homes from their homes, and and tuloy pa rin ang trabaho nila. How about going to church? Maybe some of us have the chance already to to attend masses now in some churches where it is allowed. But still, for me, for me and my family, we we attend masses still at home in front of our TV, in the you know having spiritual communion. Have you watched the NBA bubble games? Yeah, so NBA finals. We watch it online. Yeah, and congratulations to Lakers, Sir Gadi, fan ng Lakers yan. So congratulations. And also our PBA now they are playing in the what we call PBA bubble. So tuloy pa rin online, online lahat. And eto, this concerns us. Attending school is now like this. Teachers in front of their cameras, students go online as early as 6:30 in the morning. I've heard that some students are attending classes as early as 6:30 in the morning. Then up to the night, na yan, tuloy tuloy na. So it seems that COVID-19 has made almost anything virtual. Na dati, pag sinasabing online, ano yisip natin? Shopee, Lazada, Grab, ano ba? Airbnb. Yun lang yung mga online. Eh. Pero ngayon, anything is online. And that is what happened. This is our classroom now. For us teachers, yeah. So we have our table, we have our laptop, we have another monitor connected to our laptop. We have our cell phones in front of us. Meron na rin tayong ring light. Di ko nga alam kung ano yung ring light dati, but now we have that. And uh, what else? We have our own space at home. So for those who don't have their own special place, we use our dining tables as our virtual classrooms, and just like me. And nagsulputan ang video conferencing tools, ang Zoom na dante ay for for companies lang that they use if a physical meeting is not possible. So yun ang Zoom ang gamit nila, and even now. Schools are using also Zoom, okay? And ang dating tambayan, Google Hangouts, ngayon ay pang meeting narin, Google Meet, ayan so pwede narin siya. And of course, Microsoft Teams. Eto yung chat-based platform na ngayon ay pang meeting narin. So yung Skype na incorporate narin nila dito sa Teams. At ang kagandaan dito. This is not only for meeting, but also for collaboration. And pinakita ni Mam Claude kanina yung power ng Microsoft Teams. And have you tried the together mode in Teams? Yeah, di ba? Eto gusto gusto ng klase kasi parang they are in in one place together again. Kahit na virtual lang, makita yung mga classmates nila na katabi nila. So yan ang together mode ng MS Teams. Pero sandali lang. Teka lang. Yung klase ba ay kailangan synchronous lang lagi. Di ba? Nakita niyo yung ano, yung tinatawag natin na screen fatigue ng mga bata. Hindi lang ng mga bata kundi yung mga teachers na rin. From early morning to late afternoon, nasa harap ng computers nila. Have we considered asynchronous learning naman? How about asynchronous learning? Uh, what is asynchronous learning? It is uh, being together, connecting with each other, pero not in real time. Hindi kailangan na nakaupo ako ng seven, students ko nakaupo din ng seven. Hindi kailangan ganun. Yan ang asynchronous learning. Ano ang benefits ng asynchronous learning? It can be a collaborative learning environment outside the synchronous sessions. So, hindi big sabihin na, since hindi kami real time na nag connect, 
We cannot do collaborative work. Pwede pa rin. Isa pa. Yung interaction and learning and access sa lesson materials is available anytime, anywhere, and anyhow. Yan ang asynchronous learning. Diba? Ang, ang the best na feature ng asynchronous learning is its flexibility. Now we can we can do our work at our own pace. Okay, uh, this morning, introduction pa lang yun, I'll share with you two powerful platforms that you can use for your asynchronous learning sessions. Okay? First, Flipgrid. And the first time I saw Flipgrid, I fell in love with it. Talagang, ito yung sagot. Ito yung sagot na inahanap ko for my online classes. What is Flipgrid? Flipgrid is a social learning platform where uh, for, for educators like us, for students, and now also for parents, where they can connect, they can engage with each other, and also to empower voices. Flipgrid, Flipgrid's mission is this. And I agree, and I also believe that their mission is to help us educators to empower every learner on the planet to share their voice and respect the diverse voices of others. Yung nasa row four, yung nasa row four, dinadala natin sa harap. Okay? Wala nang row four. Everyone has the ability to share their voice. Yan ang power ng Flipgrid. Now, paano natin puntahan ng Flipgrid? So, I invite you, everyone, kung wala pa kayong Flipgrid account, go to this link. Ayan. So, type nyo lang, signup.flipgrid.com slash from slash Roland1969. Oh, madaling tandaan yan. So, sulat nyo sa browser nyo, signup.flipgrid.com slash from slash Roland1969. And log in. You can use your Microsoft account or your Google account. So if you're using Google Classroom, you can use Flipgrid. Okay. If you're if you have a Microsoft account, then you can also use Flipgrid. This is free, so walang bayad po ito. Once you sign in, so once you're signed in, this is what you will see. This is your platform. This is where you create topics for your classes, okay? So nakita nyo, you can also create groups for your classes. Okay, so anong, anong meron sa Flipgrid? So create a topic. What is a Flipgrid topic? It could be a, a question thrown to your students. Now, for example, if you see the, the, the image, the question is what it's like to live on Mars. Ayan. It could be an idea, an experiment, a debate, exploration, or anything to ignite conversation among your community, specifically on your classes. So for example, I, I teach art appreciation this time, and one of my favorite activities in Flipgrid is what we call Flip Hunt. So it's like scavenger hunt, but using Flipgrid. So I ask them to look for an art piece in their home, and then present it to the class, uh, where where it came from? Siguro may bumili. Was it bought by someone or was it a gift? When was it given or when what was it bought? Ano ano ang value nito? And you know the the great thing with that experience, the the flippant experience, they are able to appreciate the art pieces around them the, before they they took it for granted. Ngayon they they know the story of these art pieces and mas nagiging ano appreciative sila sa kung anong meron sila sa bahay so yun so pwede yan pwede kayo magpadebate okay you can even ask your students to to share the reflection on the sharing of their classmates so yun po yung topic any topic anything kahit anong subject ang tinuturo nyo you can create a flip grid topic once the the topic is created then you can 
control who can access the videos of your students. So you as the ed educator, you as the creator of the topic is the one who has control. So you can enter a school's email address. So for example, in our, in our school, we have our school email address. So yun ang ilagay. Or you can also put a particular email address of a guest na pwede na gusto nyong isama sa inyong uh, community and or anything na meron din tayong uh, uh, guest na pwede mag -attend. So for example, kanina I mentioned parents. Parents can view videos submitted by their children and their classmates in a particular class. So kung ano, pwede nyo pong gawin yan. And once you have uh, put the allowed emails, then it's time to share your learning. And so every topic has its own unique code. Okay, so hindi pwede yung isang topic maraming code. So isa-isa lang yan. And you can uh, share it through email. So pwede nyo i-share sa email. Uh, you know, I, I'm having second thoughts in social media platforms. So siguro mas maganda email. Or you can embed it in your LMS or learning management system. So pwede siyang i-embed. So LMS, pwede i-share sa Microsoft Teams, Google Classrooms, pwede rin. Or you can share the QR code. Kasi yung Flipgrid app pwede i-install sa, sa cellphone and with the QR code, they scan the QR code and they're in. At ito ang good news, hindi nila kailangan magkaroon ng Flipgrid account para pumasok dyan. Kasi kasama naman siya dun sa allowed emails. Ayan, okay. Then, once they're in, social learning begins. So, your community, pwede siyang i-access via Microsoft Edge, Google Chrome. Sabi ng Flipgrid, mas maganda kung Microsoft Edge is connected sila with Microsoft. Okay? And, uh, ang, ang gustong-gusto ko rito ay yung Flipgrid camera. Kasi dati, when I asked students to, to send videos uh, for their video projects or video activities, they have difficulties looking for for video platforms na free, na, na maganda, na free, na pwedeng mag-edit. Now that problem is resolved with the Flipgrid camera. So they can record directly from the Flipgrid camera, from the Flipgrid app. Pwede silang maglagay ng text, emoji, pwedeng magsulat. They can use whiteboards or blackboards. They can use frames. They can even do screen recording. Now, for some who recorded their videos in other platforms, they can upload videos in Flipgrid. So, yun ang kagandahan nun. And everyone can view it, yung kasama sa klase. And I'd like to share with you 10 ways. And ito po yung 10 ways students share with Flipgrid. So, they can practice expressing themselves articulately. Um, I, I teach foreign language as well. So with Flipgrid, I am giving my students a platform where they can practice speaking French. Ayan, nang paulit-ulit, na walang takot, kasi kami-kami lang naman yung nandun. And also, students can explain their thinking. Di ba? Sa, sa essay, minsan, pagdating sa online, uh, we are having second thoughts on giving essay assessment kasi we were not sure if our students are really answering them or baka yung yaya nila or yung parents nila ang sumasagot. Now, with Flipgrid, you can see them explaining their thoughts. Kita nyo na siya. And merong Flipgrid AR, AR Augmented Reality. So, dito sa Flipgrid, pwede yung scan, scan the AR code and yung video lalabas na lang sa inyong cell phones. Wala nang link na kailangan pang i-click. Ayan. And ito pa. Camera shy? Like me? Well, <laughs> meron pong tips and tricks na you know, offer ang Flipgrid para mawala yung kaba. Meron din siyang, um, anong tawag doon? Mm, pixel. Pixel filter para sa mga camera shy na ayaw magpakita. Okay lang po yun. Malaga po sa atin, marinig. Student voice. Marinig ang boses ng ating mga estudyante. And many more tips, like they can provide feedback, they can share their work, they can ask questions dito sa Flipgrid, and they can connect globally. So sa panahon ngayon, we're, we're in a global village where we 
can learn not only inside our classrooms, but in other classrooms as well. Yan ang Flipgrid. And connected din siya. Pwede rin kayong mag-record ng sa Instagram, Adobe Spark, anything, and then upload it in Flipgrid. Ganun ka-powerful ang Flipgrid. Yan. Next. Para sa mga first timers, ayan, okay. Now, no idea at all kung anong gagawin sa Flipgrid. You have the discovery library in flipgrid.com. So once na sign up kayo, click nyo po yung discovery library and you can copy a topic, customize it for your class. Ayan, suggestion ko, click nyo yung conversation starters or learning from home. Ang dami niyan. So, nakita dito, 25,000, more than 25,000 activities and topics for you to use. So, eventually, once you get used with it, then you can create your own topic and this time, ikaw naman ang mag-share para magamit din ng ibang teachers. So, ayan. Oh, huwag kabahan. First timers, no problem. Conversation starters and learning from home get topics from there. That's Flipgrid. Next is Wakelet. Ayan. Uh, yung iba unang basa nila, Wakelet. Wakelet. Ayan, parang wave. Okay, meron nga tayong hashtag, Wakelet wave. Ayan. So what is Wakelet? It is a free platform that allows you and your students to save, organize, present, share content, from across the web. At yung lahat ng nakalap nyo na resources or information from the web will be put in one place. Okay. Ayan. And with Wakelet, ayan, paano mag, uh, mag sign up? You can use your Apple account, Apple ID, you can use your Gmail, you can use your Microsoft account, you can even use your Facebook account. Ayan. So madali lang, lahat, pede. Yan ang kagandahan ng Wakelet. Talagang kinonect niya yung app to all platforms. Yan, once you're signed in, makikita niyo yung green button, create a new collection. So, ano yung collection? So, this is my account. And so far, nakagawa na ako ng 31 collections for my classes. And also for trainings, pwede rin siya. Yan, so, pwede ka rin mag-follow. You can follow a Wakelet creator para you'll get ideas from him or her. Ayan, okay. So, anong pwedeng gawin sa Wakelet? First, save any content from across the web. So, pwedeng a, an article na nakita mo online, pwedeng video, pwedeng blog or tweet, anything, anything. Put them all together. Pangalawa, curate them. And then, arrange them. Arrange them. Madali lang mag-arrange ng collection sa Wakelet. Yun naman yung masasabi ko. Kahit first timer kayo, I assure you, you will find it very easy to arrange your your resources, resources that you've gathered online. So you can add pictures, you can add text, you can add your own content and then support it with resources that you've found across the web to make your collection meaningful and engaging. So pwede siya sa klase. And third Wakelet has made it easy for us to collaborate with each other. So I can create a collection and then I will share this link with others so that together we can have a collection. Okay, so ginagawa ko rin sa klase ko. I, uh, for example, uh, if you've noticed earlier, meron ng European paintings collection. So I created that collection and then I shared the link to my students. And then they look around the web, ganap sila ng mga European paintings, and they shared it. Then nakabuo ako ng Euro European paintings collection from my students. Ayan, so collab e very easy to collaborate and share. Ayan, so pwede siya sa Google Drive, MS Teams, pwede rin, OneNote, and Google Classroom, pwedeng pwede. So ano ang itsura ng isang Wakelet-enabled classroom? So una, Siyempre, curating resources. So, lahat yun. So, kung meron kayong gustong i-share sa inyong students online on a particular topic, gather all these resources, put them all in one Wakelet collection, 
and give it to them. So, hindi siya sabog. Okay? So, magiging organized na at magiging mas madali na for our learners to access collection. Di ba ang problema natin, baka yung nababasa ng estudyante ay fake news or yung, yung source na nakita nila ay hindi naman talaga credible, then Wakelet can really help them. Okay? Pangalawa. Yan. So, we have a learning management system where we can create content. So, okay din yun. Pero we can also create content in a Wakelet collection. At yun ang i-embed natin dun sa learning management system. Diba? So instead of creating your content in your learning management system, kami were using Neo LMS. So shout out sa Neo LMS. And dito pwedeng gawin sa Wakelet. And then once you have combined your, your own content, your, your pictures, your videos together, and the, the resources that you've gathered around internet around the web so click get the embed code and embed it in your lms yeah, para mas maganda sa tingnan okay and ano naman yung mga students ko hoy maganda pwede siya pwede siya as a student assignment so bigyan niyo sila ng topic then bahala na sila maghanap sa sa internet ng mga resources nila pwede siya pang pang storytelling Papakita ng critical thinking skills. Di ba problema natin minsan na baka yung ginawa ng bata, copy-paste, hindi naman talaga niya idea yun, kinuha lang niya from somewhere else and then nakalimutan isight yung source. Now with Wakelet, hindi mo na problema yan. Kasi they, they, they write their thoughts and then get the, the source from the net and then put it in a collection. At may kita niyo doon kung, kung gaano kaganda yung yung wakelet collection nila. Okay. And then lastly, oh, pwedeng gawing class newsletter. So lalo na ngayon na naka-online tayo lahat. And if you want to to encourage, to motivate your your students, pwede kang gumawa ng isang wakelet collection at ipakita doon lahat ng ginawa nila during that week. Kung masyado mo trabaho ang weekly, then do it monthly or per term. Pwede during midterm, ito yung nagawa ng students ko in a wakelet collection. So, parang class newsletter. And then, sa finals, ito din. And, pwede nyong emerge yung dalawang collection na yun in one semester wakelet collection. Diba? Maganda balikan yung mga activities na ginawa natin. And, okay. So, yun yung dalawang platforms na that you can use for asynchronous learning. Where continuous learn, where learning continues even if they are not there in real time. This is our new normal. I don't know how long pa, kung kailan pa tayo makabalik sa, sa physical setup natin. Pero, pwede namang maging masaya, di ba, ang learning from home. Oh. Relax muna sa, sa 8 to 5 na harap ng, ng internet. Do a synchronous learning with Flipgrid and Wakelet. Thank you and good morning. Thank you, Sir Roland Ruben, for sharing with us your expertise about Flipgrid and Wakelet. I am a witness to that, Sir Roland. I also use Flipgrid and Wakelet. And really, the students appreciate the Flipgrid and Wakelet platforms. Thank you for your experience. Thank you for sharing with us again your expertise to empower students to achieve more. Again, if you have questions to Sir Roland, use Q&A to ask it, to ask questions. But don't forget to indicate again your school and your institution. We have 260 attendees in this webinar. Wow. Thank you for joining us again. Congratulations, Paul. Uh, we also would like to acknowledge the presence of St. Jude College, Las Marinas, San Mateo Municipal College, Locationist College, Silang, or Eastern University Committee. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is a high school faculty of Humanities and Social Science cluster. 
She is the Learning and Management System Head uh, for Monitoring and Microsoft Innovative Educator Expert as well. To discuss the asynchronous, asynchronous learning, she also shares some tips and tricks that can be used for remote learning. Let's welcome Ms. Ersling S. Dinius. Good morning. Thank you very much. And uh, I'll be sharing my screen. All right. So uh, this is three Microsoft tools for asynchronous learning. And I'll be sharing some tips and tricks that I have been using since uh, the start of this semester. So as we can see in the picture, uh, the, the style of the delivery of our lesson is from using a chalk and blackboard to whiteboard to multimedia projectors and now we are experiencing a huge change in our strategy and styles in teaching, which is using the videos. Okay. So this presentation will revolve on how can we make our own video contents for the delivery of our lessons. Videos captures our students' attention immediately. Sometimes beginning a presentation with a video is exactly what students need to wake up and pay attention to the concepts that uh, the teacher has to say. So I'll be presenting about PowerPoint presentation, obvious studio and safety. So using videos in the classroom teaches children with a variety of learning styles, be it visual learner, auditory learner, or, uh, and kinesthetic or hands-on learners and reading and writing learners. We need to recognize that our learners are different. Okay. So uh, the very main uh, presentation is all about the PowerPoint presentation. PowerPoint is uh, very basic to all of us. Okay. And it has improved its features to cater the needs of the new form of education. Videos appeal to all levels of learners and learners. People in all levels of education are exposed to videos. Videos can be tailor made to meet any uh, expectation in terms of content that will connect effectively with the learner. This is perfect tool for those who are not tech savvy. Tech savvy and it's very easy to use. We've been using PowerPoint presentation since when? Uh, year 2000 or early 90s. Okay, so uh, because of uh, the innovations that uh, have implemented by the Microsoft uh, in our PowerPoint, we can now make our own video. Okay, we can we can just uh, go ahead and uh, make, let's make sure that all of our contents are in place in our PowerPoint presentation. And let's go ahead and click the slideshow. And we have two options that we can choose: record from current slide and record from the beginning. Okay, so when we click that, we can see this uh, view. This is our view when we click that uh, option. Okay, so we have different tools that we can use when uh, recording a video. Okay, so number one is the notes. Here you can uh, input your uh, insights with your presentation or your, your thoughts about your presentation without looking at uh, uh, different resources you can just focus on the camera and explain the concepts in your discussion. Okay. Another is you have the camera preview. You can see uh, your, your background or you have, do you have a right lighting? Okay. Is it dark? And then, of course, you have your camera and then uh, the microphone. You can also have this uh, option to uh, Clear recording on current slide, or you can clear recording on all slides. What's good about this is you can uh, use this if you want to 
uh, edit just the no uh, just one slide from your presentation. You you will save time to uh, to record your video. Doesn't have to uh, go back to slide number one or if ever you want to edit only uh, slide number three. Okay, and of course the settings you can uh, you can set up if you are using the noise reduction. You can set it up in your settings. So you have the option if you want to turn off or you, you want to turn your camera on and then uh, you can use the highlighter to highlight some words or sentence in your presentation. You can also use the, the pen and of course the eraser. You have different colors uh, that you can use to highlight your presentation. Okay, so after uh, after the, the recording, you can uh, actually customize your, your video. You can put your video record, uh, your recorded video to the left side of your slide, or you can even uh, put it in the middle or on the top of your uh, slide. So that uh, to make sure that the information are clear and no overlapping, okay? you can move your video. Okay, so, so the, the, the default is in the bottom right portion of your screen. So, so after uh, the configuration, you have placed all your videos. Uh, you, you have to save it. If you are using uh, the Microsoft uh, Enterprise, you know, we have the so-called Microsoft Video Sharing Site, which is the Microsoft Stream. Okay. You can publish it. All you have to do is just click file and then click export. Once you see the publish to Microsoft Stream, you can edit uh, the title and you can check allow everyone in your organization to see this video. What's good about this is it doesn't consume too much uh, space in your hard drive of your desktop or laptop. It will just save on the cloud and uh, it published directly to the stream or Microsoft stream. Okay. If you don't have the, the Microsoft Enterprise, it's okay. You can save your presentation using PowerPoint Show or PPSX, or you can also save it as MPEG or MP4. Okay. So what's the difference between the two? PowerPoint presentation show, uh, usually uh, produces small file size rather than the uh, uh, compared to MP4, okay? So once you click any of one, you will see the progress bar wherein your, your file is being created. Okay, so after uh, another tool that we can use for, off for offline, with our PowerPoint, how can we present it in a way that uh, we can catch our students' attention? It's by using OBS Studio. It's a free software. You can download it. Okay. And um, why do I prefer OBS Studio? It is one of the most popular software used by many online game streamers. I was thinking since the attention, of, uh, attention span of many students nowadays are very short, we can think of other ways on how, how can we catch their attention. Most of our students are very engaged with online games. And maybe some of them are really watching uh, games like it, it will uh, take like 30 or one hour game. Na nakakatagal silang manood nun. No, why not yung, yung lesson uh, content natin ang pinapanood nila. Nakakatagal sila ng ganung kahaba ng uh, so once you uh, once you install the OBS, you, know, you can you will see this view. Okay, so yeah, you, we can uh, keep our students engaged by using also a uh, conversational style, no? Na uh, pagkakadi discuss tayo sa ating lesson. Okay, 
sa pag set up ng ating uh, OBS no we can we can use uh, two sources okay for setting up we can we can uh, use video capture device and window capture uh, there are a lot of features that we can use in this uh, software you can explore but uh, these are just basic uh, feature na ginagamit ko when i create my lessons So, so window capture, when we choose window capture, it will show us the, the material that we are using. Okay, so, so for PowerPoint, let's make sure that our PowerPoint is in PowerPoint slideshow already before we start recording. Okay. And then for video capture device, we, we can uh, configure it by putting filters and filter we will choose chroma key and then in chroma key we can choose the the color of our background we we need to uh we need to see if our background is colored blue or green so we will choose that so that it will uh form a transparent background to achieve this uh output yeah so ganun ng kakalabasan niya na feeling natin kapag ka pinapanood tayo ng estudyante akala para nanonood lang sila ng online streamers din diba and i was able to uh, incorporate it in our LMS no in embed ko rin yung aking videos aking uh, lesson in my e class another tool that we can use uh, in uh, synchronous presentation using our PowerPoint presentation is the Zittings. Okay, you can you can uh, search Zittings in your browsers so that you can see uh, what are the features of this tool that we can use. It can deliver interactive pre presentations that combine your PowerPoints, PDFs with video and web content. Everyone participates from their own device. Okay. If you are familiar with um, Mentimeter or Peer Deck, it's the combination of it. But this uh, tool can be used offline. Okay. Okay. So here are the different tools that we can use while when we have our uh, account in Zittings. So you can upload your PowerPoint. And you can insert uh, different uh, presentation you have made. You can use also Canva. You can uh, insert in between your slides uh, a poll, or you can also uh, insert YouTube videos. Okay. This is what I really like in Zittings. This poll that uh, will give you a thumbs up, down, or multiple choice, scale, rank, text, or word cloud. Those are the different um, uh, choices that you can make for for the poll. Okay, so this is one of the examples that I was able to incorporate my lesson in Zittings. Okay, so you, as you can see, this is our all PowerPoint presentation, and I insert the the poll in between my presentation. And uh, of course, I incorporate it in my lesson by embedding this presentation in my e-class. Or you can send it through email. This is the example of my presentation in Zittings. What is good about this is it's, it's free. If you are using the educational domain with edu.ph if the system detects that you are using educational domain it will give you uh, a classroom plan where uh, your settings will have uh, unlimited because in basic settings they only give five uh, settings or five uh, presentation and it's only limited to 25 participants but if you are in a classroom plan you will have 500 participants. Okay. 
So before I end my presentation, I would like to give you a, a great philosopher once said, wonder is the beginning of wisdom. So wisdom comes from knowing something and then enhancing that knowledge by adding experience to it. A healthy curiosity will lead us to experience different things and to explore or pursue every possible means to find a solution. That's it. And thank you very much. Again, my name is Ursulian Binas and good morning. Wow. Thank you, Madam Urs, the lover of wisdom. <laughs> You've just seen the presentation of Ongers. Thank you for sharing with us some tips and tricks through PowerPoint, OBS, and settings that can be used for remote learning. Again, if you have a, if you have questions <coughs> addressed to Mom Urs, you can use again the Q and A to ask questions. Just indicate your skills and institution. Thank you, Mom Urs. Let me now introduce our, the last, and not, not the least, not the last and not, not, not the least speaker for the day. Getting started with Microsoft Educator Community. Our speaker will give us insight about Microsoft Educator Community. And how educators create an account, connect, collaborate, on this personalized hub. She is the training and monitoring coordinator for Office 365 Digital CILB DLSUD. She is also a Microsoft Innovative Educator Expert and a Microsoft Office Specialist. She is a professor or a faculty of the, uh, Computer Science Studies <laughs> at the University of Las Palinas. Ladies and gentlemen, Ms. Rhoda Salares. Thank you, Sir Gadi, for that wonderful introduction. I thought I was going to say So, um, good, after, uh, good morning to all of you. So, let me share my screen to all of you. Okay, again, good morning to all of you. Um, I am Rhoda Sanares, and I will be your last speaker for today. I am a full-time faculty member for 18 years um, from the College of Science and Computer Studies under Computer Studies Department, and I'm handling um, subject in IT and CS programs respectively. So currently, I am also the Training and Monitoring Coordinator for Office 365 in uh, CILP, Center for Innovative Learning Programs, here in uh, the LSUD. Okay, my topic is a free faculty professional development. So getting started with Microsoft Educator Community. So why free online courses? Okay, so even in the midst of the COVID-19 crisis, teachers still have a responsibility to keep their professional licenses and certifications up to date. So with schools making the shift to online learning, this is the perfect opportunity for teachers to build their capacity with educational tools and pursue certification budgets to train other educators on the proper use of the tools. So teachers may enroll the online courses for free and earn budgets and even certificates for free. So there are advantages why teachers should get free online courses. So of course, number one, no fees. So since it's a free courses, so no fees shall be collected. Excuse so me, madam. Excuse me, ma'am, dam. Yes, sir. Yeah, it's not properly viewed in your presentation. Sir? Come again, sir? Ah, okay, okay. Let me just fix my slides. How about this one, sir?
hindi pa rin po siya naka-slide siya, ma'am. Okay. Thank you, Sir Gary. Okay, let me uh, screen share again my presentation. Can you see now my slide, sir? Yes. Okay na po? Pero hindi pa rin po siya naka-slide siya. Okay. About this, sir? Yan. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, thank you so much, sir. Okay, so again, uh, good morning to all of you. Sorry for that technical problem. So again, let me introduce to you myself. So I am Rhoda Sanares and I will be your last speaker for today. So I am a full-time faculty from the College of Science and Computer Studies Department and currently the Training and Monitoring Coordinator for Office 365. Um, of Center for Innovative Learning Programs in uh, the LSUD, okay? And my topic is a free faculty professional development. So uh, getting started with Microsoft Educator Community or MEC, okay? So why free online courses, okay? So even in the midst of the COVID-19 crisis, so teachers still have a responsibility to keep their professional licenses and certifications up to date. So with schools making the shift to online learning, so this is the perfect opportunity for teachers to build their capacity with educational technology tools and also pursue certification budgets to train other educators on the proper use of the tools. So teachers may enroll to online courses for free and earn budgets and certificates for free. So actually, there are several advantages why teachers should get free online courses. So number one, no fees. So since it's uh, free courses, so no fees should be collected. So you can save money and you, could, you can put it toward other expenses. Second one is desk courses. So since it's from Microsoft, rest assured that they offer best and up-to-date courses and then of course flexible time okay so uh, you can study at your own pace and then you can schedule your learning at your own convenience and then lastly upskill yourself okay so you can continue to scale your education through multiple online courses and that's a bonus point for your resume So teachers also should uh, take advantage of online uh, training courses. And of course, there's opportunity await and as you explore your education and gain new skills. So now those schools are mostly indefinite, uh, indefinitely closed nationwide and opportunities for in-person professional development have been canceled. Teachers may be looking for creative ways to fulfill their requirements. So there are several things teachers can do at home to make that happen. So without further ado, I will now start introducing to you MEC or the Microsoft Educator Community. Okay. So what is MEC? So the Microsoft Educator Community is one of the world's largest educator social network. Okay. Also, it is a one virtual place for learning, okay? So it is an internet portal that allows us educators um, around the world to follow courses, find and put up lessons, but also to interact with one another and organize various activities and projects. Um, there are many free resources for educators on this for portal. So dealing with both formal and non-formal education at various levels. So the courses also offer, uh, are based on the application of modern technologies, of course, Microsoft products, as well as pedagogy and innovative educational methods. And then um, each course is accompanied by a variety of materials, of course, uh, good practice examples and discussion groups. And after taking the course, so you have to uh, comply 
uh, that is uh, course completion. So successful completion of a course. And of course, you will receive appropriate budgets, certificates, and points uh, after um, you finish all the courses. So sharing to you uh, my sample training um, in MEC. So the one you can see is my training transcript wherein it indicates the name of the course, the description, and of course, the duration of each course. And also, after um, upon completion of the course, you will get a point, point. and then, uh, of course, the badge. This one is a sample badge and a certificate. Okay? So another example here is, of course, to inspire all of you to be a member of MEC um, with the permission of my colleague. I have here the profile of my uh, friend, colleague, si Ma'am Cecil Kahandab. She is a senior high school teacher in our university. As you can see, she completed 173 budgets and certificates from March to October this year. Okay. So that is during lockdown lang po. Nung nag-start po ng lockdown, during the start of our webinar, so we introduces this uh, MEC to our uh, to the community. And then in the span of approximately seven months, okay, seven months, uh, she almost completed na po all the free courses of MEC. And not only that, she also applied for MIEE, so Microsoft Innovative Educator Expert. Uh, by the way, this is a global recognition for teachers who are uh, using technology and luckily accepted as this year's MIEE. Because one of the requirements in applying the MIEE is, of course, you have to earn at least 1,000 points here in MIEE, of course, by taking up uh, courses. And then another one, okay, another colleague of mine, our uh, second speaker po kanina, uh, who's also addicted to the courses, to the free courses in MIEE, the master of masters, sabi nga po ni ang ng Mr. Gadi kanina. As you can see, he is a member of MEC since 2016 up to present and also completed a lot of courses in MEC. Okay? So because of his commitment and dedication, so he's now uh, Microsoft Education Ambassador, Mea. is also the uh, Microsoft Innovative Educator Expert, MIEE. And also, um, one of the delegates of Microsoft Philippines in the Education Exchange, E2, um, held in Paris, France, last April 2019. And not only that, okay, he, he also, he will also attend, sana po, uh, Global Education Movers Conference in San Francisco, USA, and uh, we'll share about gamification in of Neo LMS last March 2020. But due to pandemic, ayun po, uh, hindi nga lang siya natuloy. So with that, uh, that simply shows uh, why we should take advantage of uh, of these opportunities. So the next question is, how to become a member? Okay. So of course, um, free lang din po ang pag-sign up in MEC. Wala po kayong babayaran. Um, and you can enjoy everything na meron po sa portal ni MEC. So to become a member, so you have to go to www.education.microsoft.com. So upon going to that uh, site, so of course, you need to have an account muna. So you need to create one. So uh, I have here three easy steps to follow. So how to create an account. So first is, of course, you need to click sign in. Okay, if you don't have an account pa. And then number two, select Office 365 if you have an Office 365 account. And then you select Microsoft and then you can create one account na po. Okay? So right after creating an account, um, this will be the landing page of the portal, okay, where you can explore around, okay. As you can see, ayan po ang magigitsura po ng ating um, 
uh, MEC portal. Okay? And after you created an account, so you can now edit your profile, you can now redeem points, and explore other features. Okay? As what Nelson Mandela famous quote says, we can change the world and make it a better place. It is in your hands to make a difference. So, napakadali lang po on how to create an account. And then, you can now enjoy the free online courses and earn points, budgets, and certificates. Okay? So, now, let's start exploring the MEC. So, syempre, we're after with the online, uh, online courses. So, you need to go to the training tab. By the way, so, we have your training tab, lesson plans, programs, and resources. So, let's start by discussing training. Okay? So, upon clicking the drop-down menu of the training tab, you can find courses, learning paths, webinars, and online events. Okay? So, by the way, what is training? So, there are, these are courses, ranges from an estimated one hour to two uh, to three hours in time okay some courses offers or focuses on how to use tools like OneNote, Sway, Office Mix while others are more pedagogy based and designed to teach you how to integrate technology in your instruction and then each course is of course end in an assessment okay to evaluate Kung talaga bang nabasa nyo yung mga uh, lectures, yung online lectures, yung, yung certain course. And then, of course, to earn points for a co course, you must successfully pass the assessment at the end. But don't worry, yung assessment po is ano naman, uh, unlimited yung take. And then for you to pass, you need to get 80%. Okay? So medyo mataas, pero kaya naman po kasi nga um, uh, ang attempt naman is unlimited. Okay, so now, so let's explore the courses. So in courses, when you click courses, um, it will present to you the alphabetically arranged titles of each courses. So naka-alphabetically arranged po siya, A to Z. Uh, for example, so you're looking for a wakelet. Kasi kanina, di ba, nag-discuss uh, nag, nag si Sir Roland and you're interested on how to to um to use wakelet so medyo ma, 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 mahaba pa yung kailangan yung i-browse down so with the use of the the search bar uh, on top ayan po yung naka circle dyan. so you can simply type any keyword or title that you're looking okay so i have here a sample course okay as you can see that is um the title of the course is assistive technologies so this one is a beginner course, okay? By the way, there's a leveling here in the courses. Eh? So para pong game, kasi di ba po pag naglaro tayo ng game, so typically we have a uh, easy round, medium round, or difficult uh, round. So parang ganun din siya. So parang may a uh, leveling din siya. Here in the courses, dalawa lang naman siya that is beginner and intermediate, okay? So of course, beginner, so those are topics suited for beginners and easily be completed and for the intermediate so medyo advanced yung mga topics niya okay again for both levels beginners or or intermediate it, it varies po pwedeng one hour lang siya one and a half hours or three hours so depending on the the topics po na gusto nyo okay so this one is um a beginner course okay so as you can see meron po siyang uh, one hour duration and um, meron din siyang uh, description kung ano ba tong uh, napili nyong topic para at least you have a background kung ano ba tong kukuhanin yung course. And not only that, may nakikita din po kayo sa baba uh, a, learning out, uh, a learning objective. Okay? And right after na nag-start kayo dito, so uh, magna-navigate lang kayo using the arrow, uh, arrow keys para mabasa yung mga online um, lectures. And then upon completion, course completion and passing the, the assessment, you will receive points. As you can see dito po sa assistive technologies, you can earn a recognition by points lang. So, you can uh, you can receive 500 points dito. 
So there are there are courses kasi na points lang. Meron naman pong courses na na both points and badge. Okay? So ito pa po, I have here another example. So this one naman po is an intermediate uh, course that has uh, a duration of 1 hour. And also, meron din siyang descriptions and objectives. So dito naman uh, upon com course completion and passing the assessment, so you will receive 500 points and at the same time a badge. Okay? And then this one is uh, introduction to paint, so a beginner course. But as you can see, kahit beginner po siya, ang duration niya is 1.5 hours. Again, nagbabari po siya, depending on the topic. And then this one, after uh, course completion and passing the requirements, so you will get 950 points po. Okay? Without a badge. So before starting a new course, so pwede nyo naman pong i-browse muna the description and even the recognition kung ano ba yung ma-earn nyo right after. Okay? And then this one is an intermediate course pa rin with a, with a duration of 3 hours. But as you can see, uh, you can earn 2,000 points here. Aside the points, you can earn badge, uh, badges. Badge, okay? So, so as you can see, well, uh, there is a, 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 a description of the course. And then meron din po siyang video presentation about the introduction of the said course, okay? So those are my examples for the courses. So as you can see, so there's a lot of courses available depending on your choice. But again, it varies depending on the type of course, either beginner or intermediate, and with different durations from one hour, one and a half hours, and three hours, and uh, uh, a recognition. Okay, let's now proceed with the learning paths. Okay, what about learning paths? So it is the chosen route taken by a learner through a range of commonly e-learning courses. So normally, it consists of three to four courses per path, depending on the topic. So as you can see in the figure, so you have a lot of learning paths to choose from. All you need to do is to explore depending on your uh, preferred learning paths. Okay? So to give you a, a, a background, Ano ba yung ng learning path natin? So this one is an example of my completed learning path. So with uh, with the topic, getting started with Office 365 and Windows. So this is a beginner learning path with a duration of four hours. And same with uh, with other courses, you can check the the descriptions and the learning objectives of the said learning path. And bakit siya naging learning path? At you can see, para siyang root nga, di ba? Okay, sunod-sunod. So, meron siyang uh, 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 courses. Okay, so like like the this one, so meron siyang apat. Um, that shows, of course, the description and the duration, the points na kailangan na, na makukuha nyo right after taking the course the badge, and the status. So, kagaya po niya, the status ko niya, getting started with one note. So, completed ko siya, and my score is 90%. Actually, kung medyo, ano kayo, gusto niyo talaga na, na ba, maka 100% kayo, you can retake naman the course. Kunyari, this one, Windows 10 for Education. So, my score is just 80%, pero pasado naman siya. So, pwede ko siyang i-retake to get, ba, gusto ko mas, mata mas mataas pa, uh, 100%. Okay? And then, ang maganda rin with MEC, kung halimbawa nahirapan kayo to look for webinars or online events, or halimbawa uh, wala naman kayong gagawin at home, um, me time nyo, okay? So you can attend webinars or online events here in MEC, okay? So on this section, you can browse events by date. Webinars near you, may, kung may malapit bang webinars near you, or even a category of events. So just like the March 2020 webinar, this one po, yung Microsoft OneNote. So, and its role in supporting remote teaching and learning. So, kahit past na siya, as you can see, March 31, 2020 siya, kasi wala, uh, walang uh, recent na webinar. So, ang maganda kasi with webinars and online events, you can still register kahit po siya tapos na. Okay. So, so, paano gagawin? So, simply click the register now button. 
and automatically it will redirect you to the page of the webinar. So kunyari, ito po, to Microsoft OneNote. So um uh, we want na na maka-attend pa rin with the webinar ng Microsoft OneNote. So register tayo. So, kunyari, click natin si register. And then, so this one, ito naman po yung uh, page we're in um mabibigyan ka pa rin ng background about the webinar. Okay? So, kunya, uh, kagaya niyan, sa na present siya originally in Bangkok last March 2020. And the duration of this webinar is 61 minutes. Okay? So, if you're interested, so, uh, click the register to watch the recording. Click lang natin yan. And then, eto. Ang maganda, makikita niyo na kagad yung recordings ni webinar. Okay? So, ayan po, uh, makikita niyo siya and uh, makikinig na lang ng webinar natin. And with this one, you can check pa rin the title of the webinar, the subtitle, and the presenters nitong uh, webinar natin. The question is, paano kung halimbawa uh, na, 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 napanood nga natin ang webinar, meron ba siyang certificate din? Okay? Siyempre naman. Okay? Kasi nag-attend kayo. Diba the usual webinar right after the after the webinar, may survey. So, may survey pa rin siya. This one, as you can see on the left side. So, just complete the survey questions. As you can see, ayan po sa kabila. Uh, konti lang naman yung survey questions nila. And then, after submitting the, the, the survey questions, so, may magpa-prompt naman na thank you for uh, submitting your uh, survey, mga ganyan. And then, um, syempre, di ba, uh, uh, prior to uh, looking for webinars, you have ano naman information in MEC. So don't worry, hindi kayo kunya hindi uh, um kunyari nagtataka kayo bakit right after submitting the survey bakit wala pang uh, certificate in your profile. Okay? Actually, um iba po for the courses and learning paths na certificates. This one webinar certificates is sent to your email. Okay? So, kagaya ko, I tried attending this one. So, right after submitting the, the survey questions. So, tinry ko si profile. Hindi pa siya present kay profile ko, the, the certificate. So, saan siya makukuha? So, you have to check your email. Okay? So, you have to check your email. Yung registered email niyo po in MEC. So, ayan po yung itsura nung inatanan kong webinar. O, diba? Napaka-favorable ano po napaka -favorable to us. Okay? where we can still register, attend the webinar or online events, and ang maganda, we receive certificates. So, ayan. So, this one here is um, other online events and webinars available in MEC. So, again, you can explore the webinar uh, page para if you want, total 16 minutes lang naman siya. So, pwedeng uh, i-check natin lahat. At least, they will earn certificates. Okay. Next is lesson plans. Okay. So upon clicking the lesson plan tab, so we'll have a drop down menu list such as Hacking STEM, Minecraft Education Edition, and Skype in the Classroom. Okay. So ano ano ba tong uh, nasa loob ni lesson plans? Okay. Number one, Hacking STEM. Okay. So in Hacking STEM, so, uh, build uh, affordable inquiry and project-based activities to visualize data across science, technology, engineering, and math uh, curriculum. So, middle school standards, based lesson plans written by teachers for teachers. Okay? So, kunyari, you're looking for a lesson, uh, for example, in STEM, in uh, science, technology, engineering, and math. So, may mga sample features po in Hacking STEM. Or sample lessons, by the way. So just like here, um, in my figure, so those are the feature, uh, featured lesson plans. Like, for example, uh, building machines that emulate humans, lemon battery and switch, and so on and so forth. Okay? Another one is um, the Microsoft Education Edition. Uh, the Minecraft, sorry. Minecraft Education Edition. So what uh, what is uh, Minecraft Education Edition. So it is an open world game that promotes creativity, collaboration, and problem solving in an immersive environment 
where the only limit is your imagination. Okay, so here in in Microsoft uh, Minecraft Education Edition, ano ba mga uh, pwede natin gawin? Okay, so you can collaborate on projects with classmates. So you can document work and share in class. You can personalize your game and then effectively communicate learning objectives in game. And of course, if you're looking for a security, you can play in a secure environment along with the classroom community. Okay, so within the class, pwede natin siyang gamitin. Okay, and then we have Skype in the classroom. Okay. So it is a free community that offers live transformative educational experience for our students. Ito, uh, matutuwa yung mga estudyante natin dito kapag uh, um, nag-join tayo sa Skype in the Classroom or yung Skype Aton. Okay? Uh, like, for example, the virtual field trip. So we can do that. So where you can talk with experts from museums, historical sites, national parks, and more. And also, you can talk from guest speaker session. You can choose from hundreds of professionals eager to share their knowledge with your students. So, classroom to classroom connections and live collaboration projects. And also, with Skype in the classroom, so meron din tayong mystery Skype. Okay? You can connect with another classroom for a cultural exchange or a game. So, just like Sir Roland, our second speaker po kanina, siya po every year nagjo-join siya ng, ng Skype in the Classroom and Skype Aton. So, simply uh, book lang here in the portal para uh, maka-join po tayo ng Skype Aton and Skype in the Classroom. Okay? And then, um, next is programs. Okay? Ito po yung maganda with MEC nga. So, kanina po majority of the, the speakers, Sa introduction, kami po ay mga MIEE or uh, Microsoft Innovative Educator um, uh, Expert. So, kung, kung magtataka po kayo, uh, paano, paano ba mag-apply doon? So, dito yun with programs, okay? So, here in the program, so you can check the Microsoft Innovative Educator Program, the MIE program, the step or the Student uh, Teacher Education Program, and the Global Training Partners Program, and Showcase Pool Program, okay? So, what about the programs, okay? So, unayin po natin si Microsoft uh, Innovative Educator um, Program, okay? So, this is a recognized global educator visionary who so are using technology to fame way for their um, uh, peers for a better learning and student outcomes. So as you can see in the the figure uh, in, in the in my presentation last year po 2019. So in our university, uh, apat lang po ang mga MIEE sa amin. And then now, so nakakatuwa po from um, from four uh, uh, 17 na yung um, MIEE in um, in our school. Okay, I hope po right after yung marinig ang aming mga presentation, so makikijoin na rin po kayo sa trend. Okay, napakadali lang po, dito lang po yun sa, sa MEC. So, uh, there are uh, requirements on how to apply uh, sa, sa pagiging certified dito kay Microsoft. Okay, and uh, about student um, teacher education program, so it is designed to prepare uh, press service teachers to be successful in using technology tools to create learning environments. And then another program is the Global Training Partners. So, so this program naman po is for any EdTech project that ensures that uh, your investment into technology acquisition is complemented by upskilling adult learners in your organization and ensures your students and educators have everything they need to excel. And then the last one, the Microsoft Showcase School Program. So this one is a global community of pioneer schools around the world. So uh, kami, we are a Microsoft Showcase School po, uh, VLSUD. And then the program is, of course, an opportunity to engage with Microsoft and uh, like-minded school leaders around the world to deepen and expand education transformation 
using the Microsoft Education Transformation Framework. Okay? So next is, the last tab is uh, the resources tab. Okay? Uh, the good thing about the portal is, everything na uh, kakailangan niyo po in your your classes um nandito uh, not all but um majority of course uh, na na pwede niyo pong gamitin is available here in MEC okay um for example your subject area so here meron again meron po tayo again dito na search bar where you can type any keyword and uh, of course the the portal will filter uh, kung ano man yung mga resources na hinahanap nyo. Okay? And of course, with um, resources, uh, not only you can access online resources, uh, maganda rin with resources is you can create your own, you can, and of course, you can share your uh, own online resources. So, I have here my sample um, lessons, uh, of course, coming from the portal. So, ayan po, as you can see, uh, collaboration, communication, and course management with Microsoft Teams and Stream. So, a resource one. So, ayan din po. Nakikita naman po sa baba, before clicking the, the, the title or the course. So, makikita natin kung anong klase ba siya sa resources natin. May lessons, may resources, and then may, uh, may mga learning paths din. Okay? So, again, so with MEC... So, you can earn badges, you can earn points, of course, certificates for free while completing courses. Okay? So, as again, what Nelson Mandela says, uh, we can change the world and make it a better place. Make it a better place. <laughs> and it is now in your hands to make a difference. So, what are you waiting for? So, be a member of MEC. Okay, so before I end my talk, uh, I have here one uh, quote from Tony Robbins. So, don't limit your challenges, challenge your limits. So, each day, we must strive for constant and never-ending improvement. Again, this is Da, okay, uh, signing off. So, uh, magandang, hapo, uh, magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Dang, for this very informative and beautiful presentation about MEC, Microsoft Educator Community, the world's largest educator social network. Wow, so what are you waiting for? Free faculty professional development. Everyone here, let's take advantage of this. We are all academicians here and using this online platform. Why not, right? So we are inviting everyone to be part of this MEC. Thank you, Mamda. Thank you so much. So, um, we'll now proceed to the question and answer portion, but before that, let me give you some Siguro synthesis of what the four speakers talked about. Mom Claude talked about the MS Teams, diba? the online synchronous classes using MS Teams, the features of MS Teams. Sir Roland uh, shared his experience in using Flipgrid and Wiglet to empower students to achieve more. Mom Erst uh, shared some tips and tricks that can be used for remote learning. And Mam Dang gave us an invitation <laughs> to be a member of MPC community. Once again, we would like to thank everyone. 280 na po tayo, 280 participants for this MS Teams. This webinar is not possible without the help of, of course, Dr. Hernando Robles, the president of Cavite State University, and also the chair of the Jet Special Committee. Kabite chapter, Kabite province. Also, we have Dr. Judith Mary and Chan, the Education Supervisor 2. Dr. Marcos Saez, our Vice Chancellor for Academic and Research. 
and our testing uh, director, Dr. Paul Notorio. Thank you for doing this. Question and answer portion po tayo. I will read some of the questions in our questions in the chat box. One of the participants asked this question. In our university, we are using different platforms like MS Teams and Moodle. Is it possible to use only one or can they be merged so that there will be one online platform to use? Claude, um, I think this is addressed to you, uh, Hello, good afternoon po. Um, with regards to uh, the questions, uh, Moodle uh, can integrate LMS, uh, Moodle ML LMS can integrate um, MS Teams, such as in our university, we're using Neo LMS, and that's we call it school book. So we can integrate um, softwares, third party softwares, and we are using MS Teams because uh, our school are have um, Microsoft 365 business uh, and premium accounts. So Pwede po na integrate uh, MS Teams in your model. However, if your question is to integrate uh, MS Teams and its features like assessments and gradebooks, uh, I don't think uh, it, I, I think it will conflict to to the purpose of the LMS. But I guess it it can be used uh, personally and by preference of the faculty concerned yeah it, it can pass it can be made possible uh, but I guess if you, if you would like to integrate um, MS teams in your LMS platform such as Moodle make sure to coordinate with your uh, Moodle administrators such as in our school sister Ruben and sister Paul yung aming uh, Moodle, uh, uh, Moodle LMS administrators and our school are not exclusively using MS teams we use also Google Meet However, ang mas monitor namin in our part is MS Teams as platform. Thank you, Mom Claude. Another question is, um, what if you're if you're teaching accounting courses, can you suggest free apps that can be integrated with MS Teams? So from my previous talk, I, I discuss more on the basic and essential features of Microsoft Teams. However, there are application, third party applications that can be integrated in MS Teams for you to, to optimize the use of the applications. However, if the concern is the security and if that, if it, uh, let me contextualize siguro and uh, assume na it's not only exclusive to accounting, but to all uh, particular professions and subjects. I think if we're talking about security, most of the platform requires a sufficient and a comprehensive uh, applications. Most of most of ap most of the applications that has a security features are not free. Ayun po. So kung katanungin niyo sa akin kung i-recommend ko ba siya, since we're talking about uh, free Microsoft tools, if we're talking about economics, uh, hindi ko siya marirecommend, of course. But if we're talking about security, I highly recommend uh, to use paid applications to use for your LMS. Kasi ang hirap po ng monitoring niyan at ang hirap ng uh, uh, analytics niyan in, in tracking your uh, progress and productivity of your students. Thank you, Ma'am Claude. Well, uh... Another one is what are the features in MS Teams? Ito, mga teachers problem to. What are the features in MS Teams that could prevent students from cheating? Are there okay. any free apps that could help to prevent students from cheating? So we have the notions every time that when the informations are available online or accessible online, it, it can be prone prone to uh, leak and of course, cheating with our students. Uh, even us in the sal, uh, palaging palaging problema namin yan in securing the faculty members to to at least trust the system on how how it, it is implemented. 
So, meron kami mga features like randomizers uh, to integrate. However, sa, sa MS Teams po, uh, paid applications are possible because we're talking again security. Pero yung cheating is something kasi if if they will if they will be doing it kahit anong security feature siya tang ibigay natin talaga um, magagawa ng mga bata kahit yung mga uh, safe exam browser uh, they have they have uh, means on how to break the system of the the applications but with regards to cheating i guess siguro it will fall on the on the professor side or the teacher side I guess if if you would like to really know, uh, engage, uh, if your students really have uh, learned something from your course or your class, siguro make make questions that will matters and requires higher order of thinking. Ayun po, any 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 quizzes or assessments na pwede nating search sa Google or any browsers are those are are pwedeng pwedeng magmadaling magmadaling cheat siguro hanap tayo po or gawa tayo ng mga assessment that will require them to uh, critically uh, analyze and uh, creatively express themselves and and to make themselves identify so ayun po uh, maybe kasi magpo-fall talaga sa sa task natin as as professors siguro kung ayaw natin gumawa ng mga ganung questions gagawa tayo ng maraming series of set of examinations sa sa MS Teams, ang assessment nila, ang tawag nila ay assignments. So, may variations lang doon ng if you, if you will create original quizzes or default quizzes. So, yung mga ibang applications for quizzes can also can also be uh, used. Yung Microsoft can use forms. Meron din tayo mga third-party apps like Mentimeter, yan for, for uh, quiz, quiz it, yan. Pero ang problema natin naman dyan is to tracking the productivity and development of the students. So yung cheating po, uh, that is, uh, sabi nga ni Sir Gadi, lahat ng professors, lahat ng institutions, and even parents are really asking how uh, can we limit and prevent students to cheat. But I guess, uh, siguro let's, let's ask ourselves also, our assessment uh, that we, we have done and distributed to the students are these questions really uh, assess them uh, their level of thinking to uh, assess and comprehend what is their realizations in your course or in your class I know. Ah, okay. Uh, I think our host Sir Gadi has been uh, has been experiencing uh, technical difficulty. So I will uh, take over for the meantime. So hello everyone. Uh, my name is Paul Anthony Notorio. I am presently the director of the Center for Innovative Learning Programs. Okay. So um, we're going to read other uh, questions that were posted. Uh, here uh, in the uh, chat box. Okay, so uh, may I invite the, the speakers to please kindly turn on your um, your uh, cameras. Okay, so uh, there's one question here. I think uh, this is uh, Korm uh, Mam Mamdang. Okay, but unfortunately, I, I cannot see the, the camera of Mamda. <laughs> so we'll just post the Q&A uh, slide uh, in behalf of her. Uh, Mamda, um, uh, there's a question here. Uh, is the, uh, are, are the trainings conducted? Uh, one of the attendees, unfortunately, I'm not able to identify uh, the name. Uh, he had a one note training transcript that I, that, uh, the attendee acquired in a webinar. In, it's an MS webinar. Is it going to be recognized globally? Hi, sir. Good morning again. So, um, since it's from Microsoft, 
naman. So I think that is ano naman ko, uh, we recognize and if you receive the certificate of course um coming from Microsoft say uh, right after the webinar um the said naman po sila ng mga uh, certificates. So I think uh we recognize them po siya. Okay. Uh yeah, thank you very much for that. I will be uh, I'll be reading other questions here. Um, I think this one is for Sir Roland. Hi, sir. Uh, I'll put you on, on the live screen, sir. Um, there's a question here from uh, Joyos T. Orbe. OK. Um, say uh, there's a question. Can Wakelet be used for for sem semester and I think this is semester and portfolio yes. of students. Yes, sir. yes, of course. Yes, of course. Uh, I I reply that it's a good idea for for your class. So a student portfolio in a wakelet collection that is great. Yes, actually, uh, yeah, I'm going to. <laughs> uh, 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 expound on that. I am uh, Wakelet is also a very good uh, uh, um, interdisciplinary tool uh, to uh, that that can be used. Uh, yeah, I, I'm using it for for the uh, end of the semester uh, compilation of all the reports, and you get to know uh, because uh, you get to uh, train the students in terms of their. Uh, 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 information literacy. Uh, they, they they learn how to sort out the information and everything. Okay. Uh, they learn to qualify this information. Um, okay, Sir Gadi is now here. I'm going to turn over the floor again to Sir Gadi. Hi, sir. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> That's the power of technology. So the power of technology. So I'm back. So where am I? Is, is this task? What was this task? I have one note training transcript that I acquired in one test and whether I. Yes, sir, that was asked already. This. May I ask if you listen to a recorded seminar? What date will appear on the certificate? Is it the date when it was originally conducted or the date when it is actually exists? So I will answer that <laughs> in behalf okay, of everyone. Okay. The date of the certificate will be today. is heavy with the use of MS Teams to compare to Zoom and Google Meet. How do you address this concern since as much as possible we want our students not to spend much on the data? Um, hello again, good afternoon po. Uh, we all know that Zoom uh, platform uh, is one of the most stable platform in the market. However, uh, as, uh, as I presented earlier, uh, Microsoft Teams become competitive with their features and their services. So data consumption, given before that one of the most, uh, uh, the, the, one of the platform that least consume data is MS Teams and uh, um, the streaming apps, I, I forgot the name, uh, Decord, yeah, Decord. Uh, so, 
Microsoft MS Teams uh, continuously develop their system to integrate because most of their clients are in the academy or in the educations. So it obviously, as we experience even in our institutions, uh, having a heavy loads and having a heavy data. But with such, Microsoft Teams promise that they uh, they are continuously developing their systems. And as upon checking, I, I haven't experienced any glitches for the past weeks and for the past days. And probably uh, with the current setup that we have, that even internet in the infra infrastructure in the Philippines are now even improving. However, there are some areas kasi na talagang wala. So, yung data consumption with students is very high issues, not only with the students but even parents. Uh, please take note that these challenges are not only uh, burden and challenges to, to our clients, but even as a uh, professor, as experiencing also this problem. So, as I mentioned, uh, Microsoft Teams, uh, like they develop po sila ng mga, ng mga features nila at isa to sa mga talagang ini-strengthen nila because napakarami nilang client nila. At yung mga client nila ngayon ay hindi lang commercial but mostly organ organizations such as academic institutions. So they promise to improve their services, especially the infrastructure. Thank you, Ma'am Claude. This is for Ma'am Dang from Ronel. Ma'am Dang, how can I be a Microsoft Innovative Educator Expert? Hi, sir. Then, sir, classmate ko siya. Kaya, nagkatalo. <laughs> Shout out to okay. Sir, then, if you have an account po with MBC, uh, there's a program tab to doon. And then, uh, automatically, may link naman po na i-redirect doon. And uh, for the requirements, para po masubmit nyo yung mga requirements uh, ng giging FIEE. Actually, sir, one of the requirements po, as I remember, nung nag-apply po ako doon, is first is you need to have 1,000 points dyan po kay NBC. So, madali lang yun for dalawang course, courses lang yan kasi ang isang course or minimum 500 points. So, at least makadalawang uh, courses ka lang na makomply matapos so, kung ka nakadal. And prior to MIEE, Educator Expert, so, kailangan mo na sir, MIEE, Innovative uh, Educator, bago po siya mag-jump to MIEE. And at the same time, one of the requirements na naaalala ko po is in to submit uh, Microsoft's way presentation. So, may, may template po na or set of questions that you need to answer. And then, doon yung po ipapakita kay Microsoft's way sa presentation nyo. Uh, with use of Microsoft's way, yung sagot. So, yun po. Madali lang po yun, sir. And, and another one is the benefit of uh, being a Microsoft Showcase School. So, malaking factor din po ang pagiging Microsoft Showcase School. Sorry. Thank you po. Okay po. Meron pa pong question. I have this, I have students who submit videos and presentation files that are too large to open or view. Will Wakelet or Flipgrid solve that problem? Sir Roland? Too large. Um, sa, sa Flipgrid, Depende sa time limit na inalaw nyo for for a video. So sa instead, siguro if 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 it is really too large, then you can uh, tell your student to record the the whole thing with the Flipgrid camera, para hindi na problema yung uploading. Now in Wakelet, if you if you have a Microsoft account, then ask the student to upload it in stream, save the video in stream. Because in Microsoft Stream, I think there is no limit with the video file size. Then after uploading it in Stream, then he or she can put the link in the Wakelet collection. So, yan. So, pwede yan. So, pwede rin naman sa YouTube, pero I'm not suggesting YouTube because for me, you know, hindi siya safe. So, if you have a Microsoft account, then upload it in Stream. Thank you, Sir Roland. I think it is addressed to Ma'am Dang. Where do we get IT support for MEC? At meron pa. Uh, 365 office lang po ba ang i-recognize kung mag-register sa Microsoft Education Community? Or any office as MEC 2016 or MS 2019? Ma'am Dang? 
Um, for the MEC account, I think uh, one uh, is uh, Microsoft Office 365. It's important uh, to recognize the MEC. And um, kasi kanina po in my in my presentation, I've noted po uh, you have to, uh, you need to have a Microsoft Office 365 account. And um, and the perks of kaya uh, po in our school, so we have a license po in uh, Microsoft Office 365 that is uh, automatic. So no need na po na create ng ibang uh, na ibang uh, Office 365 account. So matatag na po kaya diyo ng uh, Microsoft. Ano po, sir, isang tanong? The other one is, uh, 365 lang daw ba? Ang i-recognize? Ay, na po. Okay, yun lang. Where do I get support? IT Where support. do I get IT support for NPC? Yes. Actually, just like po is our university, so we have uh, the CILC, our 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 um our office the center for innovative learning programs so where uh lahat po ng mga updates or even links for mec or um mga webinars and training so we are um updated po in this office or um if you have the other po the ict uh, the the ictc uh, office it's just like in our school for the intern um uh, our our ICTC uh, malaki po talaga yung nagbibigay nilang support to us. Just like for example, in taking certification in advance like uh, in, in uh, Microsoft Office Specialist or MTA. So may mga cases talaga na um, sila po yung nagbibigay sa amin mga support. So I think in your school din po, you have the MIS department or the ICTC. Um, Kasi in our school nga rin po, uh, the licensing of Microsoft is sa kanila po talaga ng gagaling. So that's why may mga, um, may mga cases po talaga na they offer uh, support sa, sa buong community, sa university. Thank you, Ma'am Da. Last question. I cannot register to Microsoft earlier. That's why I joined anonymously. Is it possible to get a certificate of attendance? I think so. So, right? You can still get it. Yes, sir. Uh, through the survey, sir, later, the evaluation. Thank you. So, I hope you answered all the questions here in the chat box. Thank you for your questions. And thank you for the speakers. We shall now award the certificate of recognition for the four speakers. the awarding of certificates. Commission on Higher Education, Regional Office, Region 4, De La Salle University, Las Marinas. Certificate of Attendance is presented to Sir Donald, Mom Nadine, Mom Bruce, and Mom Dam. For as resource speakers for leveraging free Microsoft technology resource resources for remote learning. Signed by Dr. Marco Santos, Dr. Fernando Lovelace. Regional Director Dr. Amelia Bikilo.
De La Salle University Das Marinas invites you to the webinar series on online learning. November 11, 2020, Curriculum Design, the Care Center Model. December 9th, Online Module Planning and Preparation. January 13, Education Technology Tool for Synchronous Sessions. January 27, Education Technology Tool for Asynchronous Sessions. February 10, Online Formative Assessments. February 24, Online Summative Assessments. March 10, Pedagogical Issues in Online Learning. March 24, Managing Online Learning. April 14, Online Laboratory Courses across various disciplines. And April 28, Online Practicum. This is Field Study Best Practices. This webinar series is free. This will be done via MS Teams again. And the time of all the webinars is 2 p.m. until 4 p.m. For inquiries, please contact Dr. Paterno S. Alcartado at psalcartado at dlsud.edu.ph. So, we invite you again for DLSUD webinar series on online learning. Again, how to get your certificate? Participants who were able to join the webinar are entitled to get the certificate. The link for the evaluation of the seminar of this webinar is found in the succeeding slide. The evaluation link is also posted in your chat box. After we have confirmed your attendance and after you answer the survey, you will receive your e-certificate within one week through your registered email. The name that will appear in your webinar certificate will be based on the name you use in joining this webinar or your answer in the survey. So that is how to get your certificates. This is the link and this is the QR code. You just scan it and go to the link to get your certificate. For our closing remarks, we are very fortunate also to have with us the Assistant Vice Chancellor for Academic Services, De La Salle University Das Marinas, Dr. Sonia Hemendizen. Uh, thank you, Sir Gadi. To everyone here, especially to all participants and all school administ administrators, good morning. First of all, I personally wish to express my gratitude to you all for attending this webinar on leveraging free Microsoft technology resources for remote learning as one of the webinar series of the Cavite Higher Educational Institution and CHED. And to our DLSUD resource person for sharing their expertise, thoughts, and experience in technology education, especially in utilizing the Microsoft tools. Shared topics are all added tools for technology education integration and in aiming the quality education in the higher educational institution here in Cavite. Before ending this event, may I quote Vanessa Vega that at the end of effective technology integration, technology offers opportunities to be more actively involved in the learning experience. I hope that this webinar on Microsoft Tools Technology open more opportunities to everyone on how the integration of free technology and education be used more effectively in support to the new learning modalities. Thank you and have a nice day. Thank you, Dr. Jimenezisa. Um, well, this concludes today's webinar. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for the participating schools, the administrators, the faculty members, and all academicians who are here. Thank you so much, Chad. Thank you, the NSUD. Thank you, the director of CILP and CILPT. God bless.